I've previously spoken about the two DS versions of the game adaptation of Michael Bay's Transformers, it's only natural that I talk about the tie-in DS game for the sequel, Revenge of the Fallen. The second Bayformers movie was critically panned unless action is all you care about, but it made a load of money. So I can only imagine how well the Transformers DS games would have sold, in tie-in game terms anyways. Revenge of the Fallen, like the first game adaptation, has two versions. Autobots and Decepticons. Since I hold the original Bayformers adaptation at such high regard and to be better than the movie itself, being the example of what the movies could have been, I will be more critical of the Revenge of the Fallen game because of its many downgrades. Let's get into it. This time, we'll be talking about the Autobots version. Decepticons will get its turn though. This game isn't exactly a sequel to the original DS game, it's more so a sequel to the movie in game form in a splinter timeline if that makes sense. If it is in the same continuity as the DS game, it's the Autobots version, since this game is derivative of what happened in the first movie. You wouldn't know this would be a completely different game from the main menu alone. It's pretty much the same as the original DS version, so this game will have another name select. Let's call our Autobot Moto Ram. It is hard coming up with a Transformer name that isn't taken. Like the original games, we get a narration recapping the events of the last movie slash game. Autobots and Decepticons fight on Earth over the All Spark. It gets destroyed, and the Autobots protect the Earth from the Decepticons. Immediately after this cutscene, we get a tutorial section where we play as Optimus Prime. Ratchet instructs us on the controls. This level is damn short after the tutorial. Our objective is to regroup with the other Autobots. We meet up with Ironhide and Bumblebee, and it's here you'll notice that this game is made on the same engine and uses some of the same assets, because Ironhide looks the same as what he did in the original game, except this time, he's voiced by the film actor. You know, I kind of preferred the game voice actor. Bumblebee also has a voice. It never was explained why Bumblebee's voice was lost as soon as Revenge of the Fallen came out, considering he regained his voice in the original movie. Anyways, they talk about defeating Decepticons, the usual stuff, but then the trio notice a meteorite out of the sky. Ratchet confirms it's a Cybertronian space pod. Optimus goes to investigate because of the potential of having an ally. Optimus manages to get to the protoform first, where we meet another creator bot. Same protoform model as the original game. After a quick initiation into the Autobots, Starscream, the Dorito-shaped Transformer, shows up and Optimus has to face him. Get away from that protoform prime. He's mine. Blast off, Decepticon! I'm not going anywhere with you! All around me are familiar faces Worn out places Worn out While Creator Bot, who I'll just call Moto Ram, is guided by Ratchet back to the other Autobots. So we go inside a volcano, collect Energon, and we make it back to the small Brazilian town. We are then supposed to scan three vehicles. Okay? Then Ratchet tells us to pick one of the three vehicles, and we're stuck with the one we pick. What? Alright, here is one of the most blatant downgrades from the original. The lack of choice in vehicle mode. Instead of selecting from a host of different vehicles, whether it be a car, truck, helicopter, or even a jet, and also adjusting the colours, in this game, you get only three vehicles. And the one you pick, you're stuck with. Plus, you can't change the colours. At all. Now, I know this doesn't exactly correlate to the game, but why the hell would a Transformer not choose a flying vehicle? In G1, it's not a problem because any Transformer can fly regardless of vehicle mode, at least what I've seen of G1, but in other continuities, Transformers who don't fly are at a severe disadvantage. And as we'll see here, that's exactly the case. You are stuck on the ground. God damn it. Well, anyways, we choose our vehicle mode. I chose medium, so around Bumblebee's size. So we go meet up with Bumblebee and Ironhide. Moto Ram is so arrogant that he says that he doesn't need help. We fight all the way back to the beginning of the level where we meet Decepticon Creator Bot, and we get into a boss fight. He's really easy to dodge, so we kill him, and we go to the world map. Basically, this is the mission hub. So another downgrade, no open world. 
Damn it! Why would you scrap the open world design? Another problem is that most missions are filler. It reminds me of Star Wars Jedi Academy. There were missions in between the main events that had no bearing on the story, but at least it was fun filler. It's just that story-wise, they didn't mean anything. So basically our first set of missions are set in Europe. So basically our first mission is set in... Eastern Europe. Wow, could you be any more vague? Let me have a look at what country in Eastern Europe it is. I had a look at Google Maps, and I'm gonna say the country is Ukraine. That's just a guess though. Does it look like Ukraine? No idea, I've never been there. The only tourist attraction in that country is, and I'm not even sure if this counts, is Chernobyl. But it's probably the most dangerous tourist attraction in the world. Anyways, the level is basically going around, killing enemies and scanning vehicles. Along the way, if you want better weapons, you'll have to scan some other stuff as well. Otherwise, you get a crappy machine gun and missile launcher. Anyways, next mission, England. At least they gave us a country this time. Basically, we have to disarm a bomb that's set to blow a munitions factory. But before we can disarm the bomb, we have to take out the turrets guarding it. I don't know why, that's just a waste of time, but I didn't program this game. The starting part is actually a bit hard, at least for me. Afterwards, we need to back up Nest troops and help them against Decepticon resistance. So we go do just that. That's it for England. Next off, we have the Atlantic Ocean, where we have the worst mission in the game. Okay, you can technically fly in this game, but it's a top-down perspective, and you can't go into robot mode. Just look at it. It's basically a poor man's top gun. We play as Breakaway as we have to destroy all the enemies. This is boring. And I wish it was like all the other levels. That would be fun as hell. And it would make up for CreatorBot's ground vehicle. Then we have to go back to all three locations to do challenges. First challenge is playing as Bumblebee to kill everything before time runs out. Next one is a race between Sideswipe and Bumblebee. But the thing is, this is a waste of time in-game and in-universe. You should be fighting Decepticons, not racing each other. The third challenge is so boring, the only way not to be bored is to sing Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins. Rev it up your engine, listen to your how and roll. Tension, begging you to touch and go Highway to the danger zone Right into the danger zone Heading in the twilight, spreading out her wings tonight She got you jumping off the deck and shoving into overdrive Highway to the danger zone Next mission, the Decepticons have attacked Rome. So we basically have to go and free an Autobot. And then we have to escort him past enemies. And then we have to let him scan two radars before we can do stuff on our own. I hate escort missions. And I didn't like it here. Well anyways, we make it to our second boss battle. Grindor, essentially the blackout clone who we have to defeat in a boss battle. The strategy is to just shoot him in circles and then when he goes to hide, scan a satellite and repeat. This boss fight is uncreative. Compared to the first boss fight, Grindor just shoots you in one place. Why couldn't it be like a brawler like the original games? Anyways, with that being said, we kill him. And before he dies, he mentions someone called the Fallen. Next continent, Asia, which they lump Australia and New Zealand in with it, and there's no missions in either countries. Anyways, first location, Siberia, where we essentially have to search and rescue. So we're essentially rescue bots. We have to free nest vehicles that help us once we free them and kill all the enemies. Not much to stay there. Next mission, we're in... Simply Asia. I'm too lazy to figure out which country we're in specifically, so we have one of the worst objectives in the game. We have to load crates over to where Ironhide is, and while we're doing that, we are swarmed by an enemy bombardment. This mission was the hardest, simply for how little time you have to screw around. I spent at least half an hour doing this part, but the mission isn't over yet. You have to go over to certain locations and kill enemies. It's tedious and something I would never do again. Next mission, Japan. 
basically we have to escort Ironhide in this mission. It's tedious. And for the challenges, we have two collect Energon time wasting missions, as well as a race between Optimus and Ironhide. Next mission, we have to go to Shanghai. The usual objectives remain, throw bombs into the water, and then get into vehicle mode and drive and dodge enemies. Next we've got another boss fight, Sideways, which is basically the same as Grindor. So since the game designers put that little thought into this boss fight, I will just skip it. Next, we go to North America for the next set of missions. First location, Mexico. And this is quite possibly the worst of every escort mission in the game. It's frustrating. I said before that you usually only want to defend yourself and not babysit any allies who can't. Anyways, we go to Canada next. We have to wipe out all Decepticon forces with another Autobot. The model of the Autobot ally makes me wonder why it wasn't an option. Anyways, we then go to an American military base and prevent the base from being overrun. And since the challenges are more of the same, I'll just skip them. Next main mission, we go to the Big Apple itself as we wipe out waves of Decepticons and face the one, the only, Dorito-shaped Transformer, Starscream. Starscream, what in the verse are you doing here? If it isn't the youngest, weakest Autobot, the Seeker is mine. Don't try to stand in my way, or I'll rip you apart. You're all talk and no action. What's wrong? Scared of me? This guy's literally the same as Grindor and Sideways, so I'll just skip it. We come across Jetfire to tie in with the movie plot, and now the last continent of missions, Africa. First mission takes place in Arabia, where we go around scanning satellites as fast as possible. Probably the most tense mission in the game, not the best though. Then we go to South Africa and kill enemies. Then we go to the Sahara Desert and basically do the same shit we did at the American base. Oh, by the way, there was a filler mission in the United States in a military base, but I forgot about that until now. With all that and the challenges completed, it's time to finish the fight. <laughs> As we are tasked with going to Egypt, since Megatron has been resurrected at this point, we have to stop him and the Fallen. We go to Egypt, kill enemies as usual, until we confront Megatron. He takes the Matrix of Leadership, the MacGuffin of the movie, away, and we have to chase after him. So after doing some 3D platforming, we go to confront Megatron. But instead of going all out, they rehash the previous three boss fights which essentially makes this a weaker end as the Autobots win the day. The end. So yeah, I wasn't a fan of the linear missions instead of open world exploration. I wasn't a fan of the limited vehicle selection. I wasn't a fan of the filler missions. I wasn't a fan of the repetitive missions, and so on, you get the idea. What a downgrade. It was so stupid that they scrapped the open world in favor for this. Seriously, who at Vicarious Visions decided this? Fire them immediately if they still work at the studio. Or wait, does Vicarious Vision still exist? Activision only seems to be releasing Call of Duty games and remasters nowadays. Okay, I looked it up, they still exist. Lucky them, I guess. Anyways, with that being said, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen is not a bad game. If we look at it as a game, it's not actually half bad, but considering that this was the sequel, there's no excuse why it shouldn't have been better. And another thing, in the multiplayer, you cannot play as any of the other Autobots. You can only play as your creator bot. So there's going to be a lot of clones roaming the map. The ability to not change colors would have made this more tolerable, because I really don't like orange for motor ram, but the alternative was a pink shorty or a fat ass ambulance. I didn't really talk about the story, but the thing is, there isn't a lot of it due to the filler missions. It follows the main beats of the movie, as in Autobots face resistance, the Fallen threatens the Autobots, Megatron is revived, 
the matrix of leadership, etc. And it's better than the movie, don't get me wrong, but it isn't as good as it could have been. I think this could have been more character building and less filler missions. What I would have personally done is expand on the original, make it an open world with new locations based on the movie. Like maybe have tranquility for familiarity, but also have Shanghai, Egypt, and other places from the movie. Improve on everything, but don't take away what was great about the original games. And for Christ's sake, let us customize our own Transformer. God damn it. If we want to be land or air, let us choose. Let us play the full selection of characters like the original. Let us have fun. But that's what could have been. I give this game a 7 out of 10. I am not hateful, but I am disappointed. Decepticons next. I'm JJ Plagiarisms. And until next time, what are stories but mystery boxes?